Firing Line with William F. Buckley, Jr. Uh, Governor Carlos Lacerda <clears throat> has, during most of his life, opposed uh, first the landowning plutocrats who dominated uh, Brazil, uh, then Etulia Vargas, the, uh, Etulia Vargas, the semi-fascist uh, dictator, subsequently Kubitschek, uh, and Cuantros and Goulart, and now Costa y Silva. Uh, he has been the governor of uh, Guanabara province and is credited with the near miraculous recovery of Rio, which is, which as governor he uh, administered. Uh, but mostly he is known in his own country as an orator, a disputatious editor, a relentless enemy. When President Vargas was uh, accosted with the evidence that one of his own bodyguards, in collusion with one of his own children, attempted to assassinate Mr. Lacerda after an inflammatory television broadcast, uh, President Vargas withdrew upstairs and shot himself, either in expiation or in embarrassment, or for both reasons. Mr. Lacerda, who greatly opposed the leftism in the Quadros government uh, and in the successor governments of uh, Gula, uh, has nevertheless now withdrawn his support from the military who dominate Brazil, withdrawn it on the grounds of its undemocratic character. It is this subject we hope to probe, the question whether democracy in Brazil, particularly and indeed elsewhere in Latin America, has proved at least substantially unsuccessful and whether under the circumstances the fight for democracy is the most important fight being made in Latin America by decent and progressive folk. Uh, specifically, uh, Mr. Lacerda, did you support uh, the overthrow of the democratically elected president of Brazil, uh, Mr. Goulart? Well, yes, I did. Uh, you know, uh, for a certain uh, time, we uh, believed that we uh, had a democratic government when we did elect by a smashing vote President Quadros, who got the absolute majority in a program. And when he did resign, his program was over. And uh, the vice president was elected on the opposed ticket by a very thin majority, became president. In other words, it's like uh, electing Governor Reagan and Vice President uh, Bob Kennedy, or vice versa, and all of a sudden you get rid of one and you had the opposite. So there was a <coughs> sense of frustration in the country, and uh, uh, President Kular was called by the military a liability to national security. So he came on anyway, because <coughs> uh, we uh, tried to have law and order and continuity of the democratic process. But uh, it seems to me that it was a sort of collective uh, political suicide in the whole body of government because they start uh, doing such an agitation in the country that uh, uh, it seemed that the whole thing was going to pieces and falling apart. Uh, then when the military decided to intervene and try to <coughs> establish law and order, Every one of us supposed that we're just going to call elections as it was supposed by law and by general consensus they should. Well, it seems that they were a little tired of intervening and putting law among the politicians, and then they substituted them. And they have now a sort of a hybrid regime who certainly does not 
uh, cannot be classified as democratic. Well, you see, uh, my confusion, and I think the confusion of a lot of Americans, has really to do with, with this. Uh, those of us who have, uh, 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 who are sort of familiar with your career, know that you have very consistently supported uh, freedom. But uh, in the course of supporting freedom, you sometimes are in favor and sometimes not in favor of people who have been democratically elected. So the question arises, uh, uh, what are the th theoretical circumstances under which you pull away from democracy because you feel that freedom is the substantial alternative? True. But the question is that uh, in these countries, uh, you cannot speak of freedom in an abstract sense. Freedom is connected with lots of things, such as food, such as education, and such as real freedom for all, and not only freedom for those who are in power. <coughs> in other words, we are a little tired of this formal aspect, and just juridical aspects of democracy. Sometimes people even uh, despise it too much, these aspects, which of course I do respect, and cherish. But still, I think the form of formality uh, is not a good way of judging the values of a democratic regime. Well, I agree. Uh, I, I agree. But um, I think it's extremely important for Americans to understand more clearly than at least this American understands the extent to which, um, quotes, democracy is uh, the number one in, in your hierarchy of values. Mm -hmm. Now, for, for instance, would you have backed uh, Premier Salazar when he took power in Portugal in 1927? No. You would not have? No. I'm a great admirer of his genius. I think he's a great political writer. He is perhaps the great uh, written orator in Portuguese language of all times. Greatest what? A great uh, speaker. Uh -huh. uh, but. Uh, uh, He's a man of convictions. He's a servant of his country. He does what he thinks is better for his country. But he is deprived of, uh, <coughs> of the gland of freedom. That, well, he doesn't I'm, care yeah. about that. Uh, freedom so. for him is, is but a luxury that some may afford and some not. Yes, but this is something that you know uh, now. But in 1927, I'm asking, because... Seven, I was in school. It was too... Yes, but, but uh, I wouldn't be embarrassed to ask you a question about uh, uh, 447 B.C., because I know <laughs> that, uh, that you know what happened then, too. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because it seems to me that it's an interesting parallel. We had a lot of American professors, for instance, who worked themselves up into a considerable lava uh, on the question of overthrowing Goulart. Now, as I understand, you supported oh. the overthrowing Goulart no, just the way a lot of people supported... Uh, uh, overthrowing of Salazar's successor, assuming that one could identify a successor mm -hmm. to Salazar. They, used to, they ca came and went about as fast as they could be shot. But now uh, I'm asking you to please explain to us what is your criterion and the criterion, presumably, of other uh, well-educated Latin Americans on the question of when should democracy yield? Well, uh, now I see your point, and uh, perhaps I can answer it or clarify or try to. Uh, the question is, when a government abuses of its own rights and go beyond the law... Who decides? Uh, well, that's, again, general consensus. Mm. How do you establish uh, a consensus? For instance, uh, for instance let, let's face the facts there, and perhaps that will help uh, the understanding of Is this a problem. numerical consensus, the majority of the people? Uh, it, it should be. Uh -huh. It should be, but, but the fact that the majority no of the people were in favor of site on Ill no. illegal <coughs> acts. No, but the fact that the majority of the people were in favor of Peron continuing in power didn't wouldn't have put you in favor of Peron continuing in power, would it? No. Uh -huh. So therefore, you're prepared to be with a minority even against the consensus. Well, that's a very difficult question. In fact, yes. <coughs> and provided, so <coughs> provided we'll continue with William F. Buckley Jr. and his guest in just a moment.
for instance, uh, I'm not speaking of law in terms of the, t in terms of, of the law as written, but in terms of institutional uh, uh, existence, functioning. For instance, uh, in the case of uh, President Goulart, uh, basically everybody was interested in his staying in power until the end. Who's uh, who? Everybody. But President Kubitschek was candidate for re-election and needed his support. At least he thought so. I was candidate for election, and I wanted an election. Yeah. Be besides my personal conviction, but even from personal career. But it was widely assumed you would be president in 64. If he was going on in his government, I believe the majority would be on my side. Yeah. Uh, but then, uh, for instance, when the uh, sailors start leaving their battleships and going <coughs> to uh, headquarters of, of, uh, of political groups and cursing their admirals and calling them reactionaries, like case of uh, the American imperialism. When, uh, when the corporals <laughs> of uh, military police and the army start uh, dividing the generals between two or three generals that they considered generals of the people, and the other generals were calling brass, uh, like case of the State Department. If you like or not, if one believe or not that an armed force should, should exist, one <coughs> must agree that it, since it, it does exist, it is based on discipline and hierarchy. And, uh, and these fellows could not exist anymore if they, if they allowed this thing to go on. The workers were invited every day to go on a general strike for political reasons. By they whom? refused. They never got in. By whom? But, uh, by the government. Mm -hmm. by uh, in the government. protest against whom? In protest against, against Congress. And mm -hmm. Congress was uh, under the menace of being closed if they did not agree on giving uh, the laws that they uh, were asking <coughs> for. In other words, your excuse for helping to overthrow a democratically elected government is that there was, in effect, paralysis in government. Is that correct? No. Well, we'd even go a little further. Uh, what we uh, would challenge is the expression democratic elected government. Because actually, we, we very seldom have a democratic elected government. <laughs> Why is that? Countries. It's a sort of a fiction that we all agree in order to try to improve their conditions, uh, the conditions under which they go on. Uh, we try hard to live under democratic rule, but we actually know that there is no such thing as a democratic rule uh, to <coughs> abide for. To well, is, is, is this something that you find it very difficult to communicate in America? To, it is. To, for instance, fashionable members of the academy who are always talking about the necessity to increase Latin American democracy? Well, uh, since you mentioned that, uh, sometimes I'm afraid that in your academic world, uh, people uh, have now a tendency uh, to uh, leave the academic language and the academic commitment and uh, uh, start using labels and, and uh, and generalities, mm -hmm. such as, for instance, when the, some people judge uh, the role of the army in these countries, they say, the army, which one? What part of it? Which group in it? In some they of say, good and some the of bad, church. Yeah. And then I read it. They say, the church is now have a tendency towards the left or the right. And I'm, I am always very much afraid of these expressions, left and right. Uh, you are using it, it in, the, in the United States after Europe uh, got rid of it. Mm -hmm. They just export it as a sort of a ideological surplus vocabulary. No, but, but I, think, I, think, I think it, uh, I, I see your point. But I, I think it is true, isn't it, that um, there seems to be uh, an American commitment to, quotes, democratic institutions. Uh, when you see, for instance, the, the whole moral architect of the Alliance for Progress, uh, the whole notion was that it was necessary to stimulate democracy in Latin America because unless you had democracy, <coughs> uh, you, had, um, uh, you had a polarization in wealth, uh, the wealthy and the poor, and you invited social conditions which in turn invited communism. Now, there are people who are quite adamant about this in America, 
who insist that uh, no government in Latin America that is undemocratic ought to have the sanction of the United States. Now, you do disagree with that, I understand. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And I would, I would try to clarify this point, too. I think when, uh, when too much emphasis were put in this question of people being rich and people being poor, and what I'm going to say is not a very, very uh, uh, undebatable thing. I, I, I know that it's submit to debate. I think far more important is to, uh, to prepare a program and to vision a situation in which our people will be more educated, I mean, have, get more education. Uh, the fact that a few are rich and many are poor <coughs> is a second fact, I mean, is a subproduct of a society in which education is not available for all. In other words, the equal opportunities for all is mal are more important is more important than uh, uh, how much each one earns per month. Because so, this so, is a consequence. So, so therefore you, you cannot you democratize not society mm -hmm. until we reach a point in which everyone has an, a, a, an opportunity for education. Well, then you would not object to a despotism in your own country, provided you yes, were convinced. Wait a minute. Yes, I Wait do. a minute. Provided you were convinced that, that, that under that despotism, those goals that you desire, namely freedom, opportunity, education, were being accelerated at the fastest conceivable speed? No, because I don't believe despotism will always do, uh, ever do that. Because, you know, despotism uh, has this uh, uh, very uh, difficult thing and very dangerous thing. They start liking it. Well, I, I wasn't talking about the perils of despotism. I said, would you back a they despotism become for so long as it was doing that? You know, John Stuart Mill, you remember, mm, sure. said that he was in favor of despotisms when it could be shown yes, but that those, des that those despotisms were engaged Mill in that kind were, of thing. Were, were a different thing. Now with television, communication, media, and all the weapons that despotism has, since you get it, you don't get rid of it. All right. That then can we, can, we, can we agree on the following generality, that you would oppose a despotism uh, even if the alternative to it were a democratically, uh, uh, a democratically sustained government whose activities were such as Peron's? No, I, uh, I would oppose the alternative. Well, Why I guess should we choose between two evils? Why shouldn't we try to find another way? Well, I think one should, but, but I, think, I think that... Um, and in Peron, uh, maybe, excuse me, uh, maybe in Peron you have yeah. the, the alternatives mm. combined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have a democratic trend... After this message, we'll return to William F. Buckley, Jr. democratic picture in a despotic frame. Well, but it, it seems to me that in Latin America, and specifically in Brazil, you've got, you've got a situation uh, in which progress is difficult for a number of reasons. The birth rate, for instance, the illiteracy rate, 50%. The rate of inflation, 41% during the current year. Uh, an enormous amount of demagogy. Uh, a, uh, uh, a, a, a sort of a utopianism uh, which uh, sees, for instance, the creation of Brasilia at a moment when there seems to be no uh, uh, obvious advantage for uh, injecting $600 million into that, let's say, rather than uh, a greater, uh, uh, more education or a better farm system. But what, it, what, what one doesn't know is the extent to which in Brazil 
a government, because it is democratically, uh, uh, democratically baptized, is considered sacred, or the extent to which a government is supposed to perform certain things, and that it is more important what it performs than, than what its uh, uh, provenance was. I would, say, I would say that both things are important, to perform such things without a, 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 a meaning is to condemn it to uh, derision and to uh, failure. Uh, you mentioned several aspects. Let me uh, mention a positive aspect there. I think, for instance, uh, I was and I'm still am a critic of, uh, of the Brazilians, Brasilia thing. I, I rather uh, like much better the roads around Brasilia mm -hmm. than Brasilia itself. Mm -hmm. uh, still, there is a positive aspect of it. It gave a confidence to the people, I mean, a sense of accomplishment. I, I believe you agree with me that when a people is, is, is injected or impregnated with optimism and start believing in its own capacity, in its own creativity, in its own capacity for overcoming obstacles, they can perform uh, prodigious things. I believe uh, if, if a government comes that gives to the people the opportunity for education and, and give them a, a sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. and also a sense that they are trying to build up together a common work and going towards a common ground, namely a common country for them. Uh, I believe they, uh, they will accomplish many things in, in just a few years. For instance, we, we, we never built a car, an <coughs> automobile. We never built a, an automobile in Brazil. In five years, with the same fellows who were farm hands until then, we, uh, we uh, now are in the seventh place in the world as car makers. I don't care so much about making cars. I'm trying to, to emphasize, to, uh, to call your attention on, on the fact that these same people we have farm hands in a sort of mining agriculture, in the most primitive agriculture. <coughs> in, in five years, they became skilled workers. Well, OK, why don't we agree then that there is much too much emphasis on the nature of formal political True. institutions, True. that it doesn't matter. For instance, uh, Mexico is widely thought of as a democratic country. It really isn't by Platonic standards, is it? Uh, I believe Plato, Plato will not be very happy about it. Yeah, well, uh, it seems <laughs> that way. Well, but he, he's not Mexican. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, <laughs> no the, uh, uh, what, what, what I should have said is that uh, you, you never hear any criticism in America about uh, democracy in Mexico because what happens in Mexico, is, as you know, is that every five years, they go through a vast national charade, and they very carefully cultivate about eight, nine, ten percent dissident votes, so as to be able to go through the illusions of democracy. Whereas, for instance, by contrast, in, in Venezuela, during the days of Pérez Jiménez, he, he didn't go through that charade, and so we were very anti-Venezuelan, very pro-Mexico. Now, uh, would you say that the United States should or should not uh, adopt the line that seemed to have been adopted by the Kennedy administration, namely that we will withhold support from those countries in Latin America that do not fulfill uh, the idea of democracy by our, according to our paradigm. And uh, I think it's your privilege. You do. Well, if if, uh, if do do you think that uh, it is correct, as for instance, Mr. Schlesinger has said or Mr. Goodwin has said, that we have lost a lot of sympathy in Latin America because we have, quotes, played along with the military juntas and the reactionary uh, regimes. Do you think it's right that, as for instance was said by some professors when Goulart was deposed, that we were going to lose the sympathy of the Brazilian people in virtue of our collaboration let's, uh, let's in Let's try withdrawal? to clarify that. Mm -hmm. You are, you are a, a very dangerous uh, man, Mr. Buckley. <laughs> Because you, you have a power of logic that goes beyond logic itself. <laughs> uh, let's, let's come back to horse, horse logic. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I wouldn't ever say uh, that uh, Mr. Goodwin and Mr. Schlesing were not right when they said so. Still, I would agree that in the beginning, the, the decision of uh, President Johnson to recognize the new uh, administration in Brazil after the overthrow of Goulart was wise and, and correct. The trouble is that after it, the regime in Brazil was so submissive to the Washington rule, so obedient to instructions on how to rule the country, and so unpopular inside the country, not only because they were fighting inflation, which is not a matter for popularity, of course, but also because of the way they were doing it. That actually, when, uh, when President Marshall Castelo Branco left government, he left a residue, he left a, 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 a heritage of unpopula unpopularity that covers both the Army and the United States. So if Mr. Goodwin and, 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 and Mr. Schlesing were not precisely correct in their first approach, facts later on prove that they, they foresee uh, they have foreseen correctly. But they couldn't have known those facts, right? In other words, nowadays, facts, America right? in Brazil is really unpopular. It a is. thing that was not true before. Before it was just a... We're interrupting uh, now, but momentarily we'll be back to William F. Buckley, Jr. Minority. And, and what, what, what was it that made us... Conservative people as well as uh, liberal radicals, all in a sort of an unanimous, if not just, but almost unanimous condemnation of this policy was actually imposed by the military, but with some sort of approval of the American authorities. Well, now, and what I think should, this what was should, this wrong. What should America have done? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. When, now, when, when uh, an American friend of mine asked that question, mm -hmm. what, what, what could we do, I, I usually say, don't overdo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, but, but we had to recognize or not recognize the new regime, right? We couldn't do nothing. Well, actually, actually, there was no point in recognizing. I think it was a little bit uh, Premature. exaggerated because this was an internal affair. And, 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 and uh, the Congress elected the president. So we saved the face of our face and the United States fa face as, co as to, uh, towards the State Department. So there was no problem in Washington to be solved, it seems to me. It was a little overdoing on this. Well, uh, in, in other words, you say that we should have recognized, but not enthusiastically. Is that, uh, is that, is that we had a sort of well, a tonal problem, is that That's it? a good way to put it. Uh -huh. yes. Sort of reluctant. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, reluctant agreement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, in the case of Peru, and wait under and Kennedy. See, and wait and see. Yeah. What, what was uh, really, uh, really bad for both of us, for Americans and Brazilians alike, is that to some uh, business uh, groups in Brazil, this uh, coup was uh, taken as a sort of a, a year-round Santa Claus. They took for granted that uh, Brazil was saved from communism. Dunque. It was their paradise. Yeah. It was their jubilee. And it should not be taken that way. And uh, they should not go into a too conservative uh, uh, and orthodox financial policy. They should remember that the country cannot stop in the sacred name of having a safe currency. 
We okay, should combine okay, okay, okay. currency okay. was developed. All right, but let, let, let me just uh, uh, tie this up now. Yes. Is it your recommendation that the United States recognize any de facto government in Latin America? I think uh, it, there is no permanent rule about this. Oh, that's I think trouble, yeah. I was afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> Uh, if there's no permanent rule, suppose you give me examples of governments that we shouldn't have recognized. Well, uh, uh, obviously, instance, Castro uh, would be obvious, Papa yeah. Doc Duvalier in Haiti. We should not recognize. Uh, we should. Okay. We should re retreat Don't recognize Papa Doc. From recognizing. And Castro, obviously. Now, who, yeah. who else should we not recognize? Well, it's not to me for for me to to make that list. Mr. Well, you're not running for president here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, well, because for the time being, I don't see any other that should you know, be recognized. Right. Now, was was President Kennedy incorrect? But of course, excuse in, in me. In declining I would, I would to like recognize to point out the this. government of Peru uh, during after the pooch. In 1960, no, actually, it? it was irrelevant because actually they they managed themselves, and I think it's very no, but very he, at first difficult he didn't for recognize. a country not to recognize. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. anyway. All right. So, do you, do you do you desire to take the occasion to dissociate yourself from those Americans who say that the United States ought not to recognize undemocratic governments in Latin America? I think it's not for the United States to decide. Well, it's certainly for us to decide who to recognize, isn't it? Yes, I mean... You said we uh, shouldn't recognize Papa uh, Doc. As long as... Uh, uh, this is my personal opinion. Uh, because but I don't like his opinion, regime. Yeah. That, that's different. <laughs> but I mean, uh, 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 analyzing it from a serious and yeah. not, uh, not per so personal point of view, I would say that as long as a regime proves to have a certain condition of durability, of stability, and of, of internal acceptance. Ah. Internal Inter acceptance. Well, how much internal acceptance? Peron had plenty of internal acceptance. Didn't yes, he? he had. Yeah. That's the trouble. Well, I, I, Modern I, tyrants I, are not very unpopular, as you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, I guess uh, then that you're willing to say that you neither want to associate with yourself with nor dissociate yourself with the, the general theoretical argument that goes on in the United States, about which, incidentally, a lot of tempers flare because, uh, for instance, of the Dominican Republic, there was very, very considerable excitement on the question of whether or not we should recognize the successor government to that which had uh, voted in... Um, the Dominican Republic a, incident, to me, is up to now a riddle, I, an enigma. I, 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 I cannot decipher this thing. I, I, I knew from the papers in Brazil that we were about to send troops to help you help the Dominicans to get rid of a preventive, in a preventive invasion, to get rid of a menace of a communist dictatorship. Or let us say of a dictatorship yeah. was not clearly defined. Well, the least I can say is that since they were there, they could at least go on the neighborhood in the same island and put Papa Doc out. I think it's for the same basic reasons. Why should they retreat uh, in, in, instead of finishing the job since they did start it? Because you, you, you believe that the United States should no, I use don't. its... its I'm just joking. Oh, you are, I see, I see. But I'm not joking when I say that I didn't see up to now the reason for the invasion of the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. And this I'm very serious. I think the, uh, tiny uh, uh, and weak yeah. as it may be, any republic has a right to live on their own. And, and, and not to be invaded by other other troops uh, under the under the coverage or the pretext or even the motivation that they are trying to prevent that country to get to be uh, communist or what well, else. Well, we, we it may be wise to avoid this since there seems to be a considerable factual disagreement of whether or not those conditions existed, uh, which justified our going into uh, the Dominican Republic with reference to a general understanding that we uh, uh, have on mutual uh, defense. Now, uh, is it then your position that the United States ought or ought not to enter into treaties with Latin American countries to go to the defense of any single Latin American country in the event that we have an appeal from the legitimate treaties, government? Yes, treaties, yes. I don't mm -hmm. see the, 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 any reason to make an international permanent force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you think we would be justified in... These treaties exist, as yeah, you know. I know, yes, I know. <coughs> do you think that we would be justified in going into Cuba 
and eliminating the communist government. I think the, past, uh, the, the time has passed. In the beginning, it would, be, it would have some and good reasons. Would that have been popular it. with Brazilians? It would be, provided would it have would been be or as would be. Quadros, who was publicly against. But he put it to me once. He said, provided it is successful and quick enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the worst thing... More to come, and we'll return to William F. Buckley, Jr. immediately. Very bright students from Rutgers University, Governor. Please. Sir, I think we need a mic uh, uh, handed over uh, there. Uh, sir, you stated that you f said that the United States should not differentiate between a despotic or a democratic government in the Alliance for Progress as long as it promoted stability and the welfare of the people. Well, wouldn't such a well, if it was a despotic regime, wouldn't it have to be extremely benevolent in order to comply with the democratic ideals of the Alliance for Progress? Well, uh, I think uh, I, I did not make myself very clear. I, uh, I'm not saying that the American people should not differentiate. What I'm saying is that it's not for the American government to make differences between that, because uh, sometimes what, uh, what a government here may consider a despotic regime may not be considered as such by their own people. In other words, it's not for any nation give an example? To, to be the judge of the other nation acceptance by their own uh, citizens. <clears throat> so I think uh, there are many other ways of disapproving it. And if we, if we didn't think so, uh, how could the UNO exist? How could the United Nations exist, since they have so many uh, regimes there represented that are so evidently despotic? Could uh, you give us an example of, of, of a country you have in mind, for instance, in Latin America, that is sort of disapproved of by us, but you think is approved of by, the, by its own <coughs> constituency? No, I don't know of any, but we are discussing in theory. Yeah. Is figuring an example. No, I don't know of any, actually. Mm -hmm. Is there another? Yes, this gentleman over here. But I mean this, if you allow me, I'll just uh, try to clarify this. There was a time in which the expropriation of an American uh, business group in, in uh, Latin America did develop in the Senate the so-called uh, Hickenlooper Amendment that uh, 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 prevented America to lend any amount of money to any country in which there was an expropriation outside of law. You oppose that? This is a right that Americans have, yeah. and I don't, I don't, I don't challenge that. So let's make <coughs> a difference between political recognizance and 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 the right that Americans have to lend money or refuse to lend money to this or that government, this is different. Well, did you think it might have been wise if the United States had passed the Hickenlooper law? That is to say, might that have uh, encouraged a certain restraint uh, in Latin American government sufficient to permit an increased flow of capital? From no, the because I, I I also would say that uh, th th any government is entitled to their own initiative. I think. 
Uh, perhaps some government in Latin America would say, we prefer to go this way instead of getting loans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's up to you and up to them. Uh, uh, that's the point I'm trying yeah. to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, There's a question, I think. Uh, um, how committed was the American government, or do you know how committed the American government was to the overthrow of Goulart? For example, I was on a destroyer at the time which raced towards Brazil at the news of the revolution. And when it received news that the revolution was successful, came around and came back to port, went as far as the equator. From there Norfolk. was a lot of talk about it. Just recently, a book has been printed in this uh, last event by an American professor who is a liberal. And uh, he concludes that there is no definite evidence of anything. Of any what? Of any interference of, or, uh, of American authorities whatsoever in the preparation of the overthrow of Goulart. Of course, on the Goulart side, especially on the Brizola side, with his brother-in-law, is the most radical wing of his supporters. And now they disrupt and <coughs> Brizola is fighting Goulart. Uh, there are many accusations of it, but I have not the slightest proof. Uh, what I have is different, and I think it's serious enough, is that uh, certain groups of the business community, American business community, took for granted that this, uh, this overthrow of Goulart meant for them a certain privilege in getting uh, uh, certain advantages of this new regime. This, it seems to me, is far more important than the idea of a conspiracy of the CIA to overthrow Goulart or anybody else. I think there are two idioticies that we should fight to, or at least we should refuse to abide to, is the uh, right idea of the conspiracy on the left and the leftist idea of a conspiracy of the right. I think it's about time to get rid of it and try to analyze logically and coldly facts and not just uh, ghosts of facts. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, that's what <coughs> we try to do. I, 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 uh, I would like to emphasize this. There is not the slightest uh, evidence of interference. But of course, uh, I believe uh, the American authorities there and here were pretty happy when that thing happened, mm. which is also their so privilege. You. So were you. So yeah. were I. So was so I. So was I. So, uh, <coughs> I, uh, I think uh, it's, it's their privilege to smile if something uh, good for them happens. Discreetly. The, wh what, <laughs> what, is, what is really serious is what happened after it. The, 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 the growing discontent the growing uh, disappointment, uh, the fact that uh, sometimes, Mr. Barclay, uh, you and other people in several, several points of the political uh, uh, spectrum have uh, uh, criticized uh, the State Department, uh, I, I renounce to it. You what? I renounce to, I, re I resign to the idea of criticizing the State Department of Latin American policy. Mm -hmm. And for a good and simple reason, is that uh, because the State Department doesn't have a policy. <laughs> well, I, I, I gather They change <coughs> so much. They change from Tom Mann, who did believe 100% uh, in private initiative as the only and sole uh, uh, way of solving problems down there. I gather from to the other fellows yeah. who are more or less, let's say, socialistic in their, in their general approach, that actually they, uh, as one correspondent put it, they just react to incidents. Mm -hmm. But I, I gather point. from the last 30 minutes that, that, uh, that this is what we ought to do, is to have no policy in Latin America. No, sir. Simply to view we things at hoc. No, you, you didn't get me this time. <laughs> we were just discussing recognitions. Yeah. of government. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were yes. not discussing a permanent policy. Exactly what I'm trying to say is that you need a permanent policy. Alliance for Progress was, was ought to be, but uh, after that uh, crisis of leadership that goes on in the continent, if, uh, if uh, I cannot say in the world, the thing is that he has lost momentum, it has lost inspiration, has lost... After this message, we'll return to William F. Buckley, Jr.
a sort of a financing of specific projects like any big bank would do mm -hmm. if it was proper for them to do, it was profitable. On the other hand, as elections come here, there is an old uh, game of American politicians is to go to their voters in the Midwest and say, let's stop this giveaway program. Mm -hmm. And they uh, try to convince their voters that if they are re-elected, they will never more vote for aid to foreign relations. Then they start cutting it. This is a typical pre-election uh, uh, bonus. Yeah, but just think of all the extra coffee we drink during election year. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a question over here, uh, Governor. Uh, I'd like to get away from uh, the external uh, forces dealing, uh, affecting Brazil for a moment. Uh, Mr. Lacerda, is there a, what is exactly the role of middle class in Brazil? Doesn't if it's, exist, uh, does it? It does. <laughs> it does. If it's, there is uh, a book by Professor J Johnson from uh, Stanford on it. If it's so polarized between the, uh, the elite and the impoverished, uh, by uh, going against a uh, democratically elected uh, regime in the, in the very beginning, aren't you really planting a seed for uh, further revolution? If the differences are so polarized that there is no middle class there? No, I think there is a middle class, a growing middle class, who has a growing role to play in political and social affairs. Actually, it is the class more interested and more concerned in the process of, of improving the democratic uh, system. And uh, thanks to this growing middle class, we could, uh, could manage uh, 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 this sort of social and political sandwich in which we have lived between the status quo, the social inertia mm. of a small but very powerful minority, and the growing discontent but, uh, but social inability of a growing uh, and, and very, uh, very inarticulate majority. What percentage of the Brazilian population would you say belong to the middle class? Uh, to begin with, I don't believe in Brazilian statistics. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I'm very cautious about this. But I would say that uh, the, the middle class uh, 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 should be judged as such, not only in terms of how much uh, of their uh, per capita income, but rather in terms of their uh, psychological uh, 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 behavior, or, uh, mm -hmm. their uh, aspiration, their mentality, and their way of living, mm -hmm. and their way of, of <coughs> trying to live. In that sense, the majority of the Brazilian workers, and I mean industrial workers, being comparatively new as a class, have definitely a mind, a mentality of a middle class petit bourgeois. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, this, I think, is a very healthy thing. And many people who sometimes write about these things here don't take that in consideration. Well, they we, don't have the, we don't have the, the angry, bitter worker uh, like Marx uh, described in the Industrial Revolution. Uh, I mean, like uh, he count on. No, b for a good and simple reason. These fellows, uh, they, they compare themselves with was where, what they were a few years ago. Or they compare themselves with the lives of their fathers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they do realize that they improve. Yeah. They have a sense of promotion, yeah. a sense of social mobility, which is going pretty fast. Well, are they the ones who are most hurt by inflation, as is co commonly they suggested? Were, no, they were not hurt by inflation. They actually yeah, were promoted by that inflation. Mobile. And now they are hurt by deflation. They, they, they came from a sort of a, a, uh, a trip to prosperity, if I may use that word. I mean, inflation was like LSD for them. They just got this trip, and all of a sudden, they were deprived of it, and they fell down in the middle of a, a, a hole of depression in, in all senses. Depression in the sense of frozen salaries, depression in the sense of losing face, Depression, the sense of losing freedom to organize and even to protest against that. So then the danger begins. But I think there is a lot of funny propaganda in presenting the Brazilian worker and uh, 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 like a uh, 
a desperate, a group of desperados trying to make communism available. This belongs to an old tactic of uh, politicians who used to come here, and like they did in so many places in the world, and blackmail your government, saying if you did not give us dollars, we'll go wide and call the communists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, by way of summing up, um, uh, Governor Serda, may I ask this, if it's public information, do you intend to run for president? <laughs> Well, they say I intend to, and I don't deny that. Is it is it true is it true that you have an alliance with Kubitschek and Goulart? Yes, we did make an alliance with Kubitschek and Goulart for, but not to for me to run for president, to uh, to uh, fight for a popular vote who was suppressed in Brazil, they uh, transform it in an indirect vote, which is sort of an alliance between the military regime and uh, old oligarchs who uh, survived through this bargain. Mm -hmm. Now, we want uh, the now people Mr. to Goulart, make the decision. Mr. Goulart and Mr. Pr and Mr. Kru uh, uh, Kubitschek have lost their political liberties. For 10 years, yes. yes uh, and without the right to defend themselves, which I think was basically a wrong thing. Uh, you would not, you would not have, you, ne you never sanctioned the deprivation of political no. liberty. Uh -huh. No, not on that point. Well, then if how, if, if well, they well, were deprived well, of their rights after a Jew trial, Mm -hmm. was the well, right to defend themselves. Well, what, what, well, kind of, what kind of coalition can you uh, have with people who have no political rights? But they uh, have what, what you they have been watching the William F. Buckley, Jr. on his program, Firing Line. And, and our thanks to Mr. Buckley, to his guest, Carlos Lacerda, and our audience, including several members of the political science classes of Rutgers University. This has been Firing Line, William F. Buckley, Jr.